if you guys want to sell mortgage in the first part of your conversation in your appointment. So the way that this works is like, if we have an appointment, right? That's a long word. Um, so if we have an appointment, hopefully this is all like decently visual up here. We have an appointment call. Now, if you set an appointment and you're like going super deep into the process, like that's totally fine. But I think that there's something psychological with these people when you do set an appointment that they're not like being pushed to make a decision right away because that's not what they want to do. They don't want to be pushed. They don't want to have someone jam numbers down their throat. They're not going to lie to you about, you know, smoke screen objections like final expense does. And it's interesting because a lot of these people are at work. So you have to set an appointment anyway. So a lot of times I'm just setting an appointment because you have to, you know, like they truly are at work. Final expense clients, they're not actually at work when they say that they're at work. You hear like, you know, Jerry Springer in the background on the TV and they're like, I'm at work today. And you're like, is that the TV? Is that Jerry Springer? Can you grab the remote and turn that down real quick? This is only going to take a second. I'll have you off the phone in just a minute. And then they go and turn the TV down. You know, they're just, they're smoke screening. So it's important for us to make sure that if they are, you know, for me at least, and what everyone else is doing, we set appointments. Um, the leads come in, they're going to be the, if you're using the internet leads, they're going to be the most fresh and they're very high intent that same day right away. You know, first couple hours, really, if you, if you call them within the first 24 hours, they're like, yeah, I remember that exact thing. If you call them, you know, 24 to, I would say like, I don't know, 36 hours, you know, they're, they're pretty receptive of it. And then after that, they might be like a little bit less turned on to talk about it. And you might not have as great of a response ratio, right? But my first call is always the appointment. And so my appointment, if it's got to be quick and they're at work, I'm, I'm mirroring their energy. I'm like, it's cool. Yeah. The first, first call is really just to make sure we got the right person on the phone and just to make sure that we do have you down here in Texas and 70 or 64 years old. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. All right. Great. Now, most people are usually uh, working until about four or five o'clock in the evening. Is that about when you get off as well? Yes. Okay, great. Right. And so I'm setting the appointment, tying it down once and that's it. And so that's our appointment call. Sometimes if they're retired or maybe they're at home and they're not doing anything, I'll go into medical a little bit and just try to get an idea, but it's not required. Um, in that script that we have in Lightspeed, it's there on the appointment side, but you don't have to complete all that. You want to set it, you want to get them on the phone, confirm it's them, or that's just what I like to say. And then we just, we that's it. We're boom, we're setting it. Uh, and we're good, right? That really quick process sometimes, sometimes they're 30 seconds long and that's totally fine. Um, we just want to know when they're going to be home, right? So I'm going to get on the phone the second time. And so I'm going to go into the second phase, all right? And the second phase is the is the phone call, right? The, or the, the appointment. I'm going to call them. The first thing I'm trying to do on the phone call is figure out three things. I'm trying to figure out their age, right? I already know their age really, but their income, and their health. That's going to figure out the close for me later on. I, I like to do that right away. Give myself a buffer to figure out, you know, how I'm going to start to go into the process. Cause if, if they're like, you know, I'm going to give you an example. If they can't qualify for a term policy or they're too old to get a term policy where they don't have the income to get a term policy and their perception is that they're going to pay the house off with a mortgage protection plan. Well, what happens is if I go into all these different situations and I'm explaining, you know, how great it is to have your house paid off, but it's $800 a month for a term policy. They're probably not going to do it most times. Right. And so it's really important that we figure that stuff out to then know which closing framework they're going to fall into. And it's, it really gets broken down into two separate buckets of, is it a term policy or not? It's not a term policy. It's one of the whole life policies. And it's going to be that equity, equity protection, that uh, that style of presentation with those three that are equity protection, transfer of assets and reverse mortgage. Those three are going to be pretty similar. But the appointment setting, uh, or excuse me, that first phone call, again, first couple of minutes, I'm figuring out age. I'm figuring out income. And I'm figuring out health. And so I'm going to give you guys an example. If I'm calling someone and I'm like, hey, um, you know, I'm going to confirm their age right when I get them on the phone, maybe, right? Or maybe I'm just assuming that it's correct because it's on my lead sheet. And even though sometimes I get 118 year olds that supposedly fill out my sheet, like I'm just going to assume that most, most times it's right, right? Um, 
And so when I do get it, when I do get them on the phone, hey, just wanted to make sure, I always send over a photo of a virtual business card that I created on Canva. If you go on there into designs and you just search life insurance, you can like throw in your own photo, your own phone number, all that good stuff. Um, you can create your own, customize it, make it fun. I put on like, I, I took some screenshots from Google, like from John Hancock, Aetna, Americo, some of those big companies that people know, Mutual of Omaha, Transamerica. I threw it on there as well, just so they know who we work with. Sent that over with my phone number, national producer number on it. And I send that every time I set an appointment. So people are like, oh, um, you know, this person is, this is who's calling me, really, right? And then they, they kind of know. So I'll send that over and I'm always like, hey, just wanted to make sure you saw that uh, we had sent over um, our, uh, I sent over my virtual business card just so you know who you're going to be working with. You got that, right? That's just, that's how I open it. Because sometimes like beforehand, it was like kind of awkward when I used to do it, but I, I, now I say that as my intro. And they're like, yeah, I got it. Or no, I didn't. I'm like, no worries. I'll send it over right now. Okay, perfect. And then um, I'll, I'll go right into it. I'm just like, hey, just want to let you know the pricing of the programs are going to be based off of three things, age, income, or uh, age, health, and then the current amount that we're going to be looking at. And then the there's tons of different kinds because there's so many different companies that we have access to. So we're really going to try to figure out which kind is best for you and how much is going to be best for you. And so I'm going to go through my little script and then I'm going to do fact find, right? So right now I know their age. I'm going to go right into fact find. I'm going to ask current loan amount, current equity, right? And this is all in the script. Um, if they're under 40, I'm going to ask what they're, you don't have to do this, but if they're under 40, I'm going to ask about their uh, current amount or their current interest on the, on the loan that they got. But we're going to brief over that. So current loan amount that's on the loan, the equity that they have in the home, the number of years on the property, what their monthly payment are. Right. And so those are the big ones that I like to ask. And then I always ask income. And so on the appointment call or right at the beginning there, right before I dive into this section, I'll say, is it just you in the home? I try to do this on the appointment call. Is it just you in the home or is there a loved one? Do you have any family members there as well? If they say there's other people there, I'm asking for the appointment call when there's going to be family members there. I'm like, uh, or if there's gonna be a husband and a wife there, right? They're like, yeah, I have, I have a wife. I'm like, okay, cool. Do you guys both work? Right. And then if they say yes, I'm like, okay, what time are you guys both sitting down at home with a pen and piece of paper? Now, the big thing is like, you know, once you get to the end of the process, you're gonna hear, I need to think about it if they're not both there. And it happens like a huge percentage of the time if they're not both there. Um, and so like if they're both there, they're going to sell each other on why they need it. Cause like one of them's getting screwed. If the other one doesn't buy it, <laughs> does that make sense? It's so much easier to sell when they're both sitting there with you. So do everything that you can to get them both there. Um, so I'm going to go through that. I'm going to ask them those questions. If there's two of them, I'm saying, okay. And how's the income broken down by, are you earning a certain percent or how much a month are you earning and how much a month are you earning? So if there's two people I'm asking, Hey Susie, how much do you earn? Hey Bob, how much do you earn? And then they're going to tell me, right? And so right then and there, I'm going to figure out if there's a breadwinner, who's going to be in the worst position. You know, sometimes people earn about the same. Sometimes it's way lopsided. Sometimes one person's working, one person's a stay at home parent. Sometimes, you know, they're both retired. If they're retired, I want to ask them if they know how social security survivorship works. And a lot of people don't surprisingly. When one person passes, the remaining spouse keeps the higher of the two amounts. So a great question, if someone says, if they're over, you know, 60, 65 years old and they're, and then they say they're retired and they say, yeah, this is our income. It's $8,000 a month. And then I say, okay, um, are you guys currently on social security or how's, what, what, where's your income coming from? Yeah. It's social security. Maybe it might be social security and a pension or social security and retirement payment, right? Whatever it is. Okay. And, uh, how much are you guys each earning from social security? And they'll tell you. And then. When they tell you, you know, you'll say, do you guys have an idea of how social security survivorship works? And they'll say most of the time, you know, no. And sometimes they say yes. And they say, okay, so social security survivorship works like, Susie, if you pass away, Bob's going to keep the higher of the two amounts. Do you think Bob's going to have a harder time keeping the same style of living and living up to the same quality of life that he, that you guys are living right now with only $6,000 a month rather than the 8,000 or rather with the 5,000 rather than the the 8,000 or whatever the discrepancy is, right? It could be smaller than that, but just give me an example. They'll always say yes, every single time. 
And so right there, you know, with all of this information, you're so you're already starting to change their perspective of like, oh, we're good. It doesn't matter to, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this might help us. Right. And so then I go right into medical questions, um, you know, and really simple, same thing like final expense. I try to just make it easy on them. If they get a little bit antsy when I'm asking, because sometimes they're like, this isn't life insurance, right? And you're like, no, no, not at all. Any kind of medical diagnosis or ailments in the past. And they're like, oh, no, no. But if you go too many questions, you kind of got to know when to jump in and out of it sometimes, right? But for the most part, you're just going right into medical questions. You know, uh, any kind of diagnosis, any kind of prescription medications, really quick, boom, boom, boom. No, gotcha. Um, any felonies, anything like that in the past, sometimes I ask that so I don't have to figure that out in the app. Um, but I'm doing medical questions right then and there. I know where I'm going to go now. Boom. I got age, I got the income, and I got health, right? I'm going to give you guys an example scenario. Let's say that it is somebody that, you know, we'll, we'll say someone, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're retired. And let's say that Bob is earning, um, let's just say five thousand dollars a month and then let's say that Susie is earning two thousand dollars a month and they're both on social security this is a situation that you'll see a solid amount um they're both on social security and so i don't know if this is backwards for you guys is it that would really defeat the purpose of this um no it's good <laughs> nice all right cool so Let's say Bob's earning 5,000, Susie's earning 2,000. Well, I know that. And let's say that they're, you know, they take a high blood pressure medication. Okay. So their household income. And so what I'm going to do is I'm writing this stuff down. So I write down loan, loan amount. And then I'm writing down equity, how much their equity is, how many years are left on the loan. I'm writing down what their monthly payment is. So I'm going to make up a scenario for you guys, right? Let's say that, you know, uh, loan is currently. Let's say the loan amount is 200,000. Let's say that their payments are $1,000 a month. Um, let's say that their equity is 100 grand. And then let's say that they um, have 27 years left on the loan, right? So so this is someone's situation, right? Decently healthy. Um, they're not, they're, they're, they're final expense products healthy, right? They're going to get Americo um, is, is what we're really trying to figure out. If they're, you know, let's just say, 64 and 68 or something, right? 64 and 68, they got a hundred, $200,000 loan. They pay a thousand dollars a month. Equity is a is hundred thousand loan is 27 years. And then Bob's earning $5,000 a month. Susie's earning $2,000 a month. And they have a total income of 7,000. And they're healthy enough to get a whole life uh, America Eagle Premier Series plan, right? And so this is all enough information for us to figure out where to go. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, well, they can't get a term policy because, you know, their age, they're, they're in their mid 60s. They don't make 100 and, you know, or they don't make 15 or $20,000 a month. So it just wouldn't be realistic for me to show them a policy that's going to be that expensive for their age. Um, you know, they're, they're above in their sixties, mid sixties. That's probably going to be an equity protection style plan. So I know that I have to go with the whole life policy, not a term. So the terms off the table. So full payoff and partial payoff, not, not an option. Right. So I know that their income is pretty solid. So we should be able to get an equity protection plan. No problem there. Health. They're going to be able to qualify for it. I'm going to go equity protection. That's how I'm going to start to think about the rest of this conversation. I'm not like, oh, what are they going to get? I'm going to wait till the end to look at it. Like, I'm like, okay, they're going to get an Americo Eagle Premier Series plan, and it's going to be equity protection. how I'm going to throw it up and, and, and present it to them. Does that make sense, guys? Right? So, like, I'm already predicting how my presentation is going to go. So, for this next section, as I ask questions and I talk to them, 
it's all centered around what I just decided. Like you can't wing the rest of it and figure it out at the end. This is where you make the decision of what they're going to get. So if they were younger, 20 years younger and perfect health, I would try for full payoff, you know, but they're not 20 years younger, but I figure that out now. So I know that when I go into this next section, that I'm exactly going to be presenting what they need to hear, what they're going to be able to qualify for and how I'm going to tailor it to them is really like, is all already done. You know what I mean? Like I've already figured that out. And so at this point, I usually know, you know, if they're both working, what that situation looks like. Um, and if I haven't done credibility yet, I'll do that right now. So grab pen, grab a piece of paper. We'll be working together, moving forward. Uh, it's my name, my number. You guys can call me whenever, direct line, that whole same thing. It's the same thing from the final expense conversation. Um, and then understanding their situation, I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to ask a couple extra questions, right? And so if I haven't already gone in, like I've already done our income stuff, so I don't have to do that. Um, and then really what I'm trying to do is ask a couple questions to get them to admit that, yeah, it's going to be harder living the same style of living if I'm not, you know, if we don't have anything. Because like Bob's income is going to, or Susie's income is going to go away. I'm only going to have 5,000 instead of 7,000. And like Susie's going to be in a, in a worse position or they're both going to be in the same position, but it's not going to be as good, right? Social security survivorship is going to take over and they're not going to be making the same kind of money that they're making. And so I'm asking a couple of questions. Hey, you know, have you guys thought ahead about this? Is this something that, you know, Susie, I'm sure that you're in a position right now where making sure that you guys get something in place is something that's been on your guys' mind. You know, what would you do if that was the case? Have you guys thought that far ahead? Yes, no, right? And so maybe I'll ask, do you guys have anything in place right now, like life insurance? If they say yes, you know, I don't want to get too bogged down on I usually skip over it because it's not life insurance. That's how I'm presenting it. Um, and so what I'm doing here, and this is really what I wanted you guys to see is I'm going into this next phase of the conversation. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting them to grab a pen and paper. So they already have one because we do credibility. And so I've asked a couple extra questions. I've kind of slowed it down a little bit for them right there and just asked a few questions. And now I'm like, all right, grab a pen and paper and draw one, two, and three. Okay. And so we'll go one, two, not a two, we'll go two, three. And this is really putting their situation on paper. Okay. That's all this is because we've already kind of touched on it, but we're just going to lay it out in front of them so they can visually see it. Now I want you to draw a number one and put mortgage. So they're going to write mortgage. And then I'm going to say, and I want you to write, if it's equity protection, I'm saying, write your monthly payments down. So a thousand dollars a month. Right. So a thousand bucks a month, they're going to write down. And then number two, I'm going to say write income. And then number three, and then so I'm going to have them write their monthly income as a household and what they each earn. So I'm going to have them write 7K. And then I'm going to have them write 5,000 and 2,000. So here, so 5,000 and 2,000. And then I'm going to have you write down equity, okay? Whoops. And so uh, what's our equity? It's 100,000, right? And so what we're doing is we're just getting them to face their situation on paper. So it's not like just floating around their head. They said it and they forgot about it. Like they're staring at, they're staring right at it now. And so what happens is we go, all right, your mortgage, right? And maybe I'll have them write down the total amount as well. And so the total amount is 200,000. So this plan is going to help us protect these three main areas. Number one, your mortgage payments is a thousand dollars. Right now, I'm guessing that it's going to be a little bit more difficult losing a portion of your guys' income to be able to make those mortgage payments if we didn't have anything in place. And one of you guys was to pass. Am I right about that? Right. Okay. Number two, our income. Clearly our income is going to go away. So to be able to keep on making mortgage payments, keep living the same standard of living that you're living now, when you're mourning and grieving about losing each other, the last thing we want to do is put you guys in a financial situation where you guys are having to call banks, loan and lenders and figure out how you're going to 
pay for the service as well as how you're going to pay for the house, stay in the house while you're having to deal with all this emotion that you're going through right then and there. And number three, obviously your equity. The last thing that we want to do is have you miss any mortgage payments. Now, do you know what happens if we do miss a mortgage payment, Susie? Uh, we would lose the house, right? Maybe they might say, they might say, I don't know. They say, well, if we miss a couple of mortgage payments, the bank's going to come in and take the house back. The last thing we want to do is put you guys in a situation where you guys lose the house. You guys are going to pay into this for a while and you've already put a lot of money into it. And as time goes on, your equity is just going to grow. And we don't want you guys to have to spend a bunch of money into this. And then you guys are left with nothing after all that hard earned money that you're putting into it. Even if we did leave it for family members or sell it, you guys could cash out with $100,000 in the bank account rather than giving it back to the bank. Now that's a lot of money. And then, so I love to say, what's your biggest asset right now? And they, nine out of 10 times will say 99 out of a hundred times, they say the house. And you say, I think we can both agree without our income, we wouldn't be able to pay for the house, right? And so then they always say, yes. So I think that our biggest assets actually are income, not the house, but the house is a great asset. And if we don't have protection on the money, we're not going to be able to keep the house. And the house is worth a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it's really important that we make sure we do keep the house. Is that fair? Right? And they'll say, yeah, that's fair. And so I already know what's important to them since I know what we're presenting because I did this whole situation over here. I know it's equity protection. I'm not guessing here. I'm tailoring it all about the equity. I'm tailoring it all about the mortgage monthly payments. I'm not like, we're going to pay the whole house off. And then I get to the end and I'm like, term policy is going to be $989 a month. Oh no. Right. Which is like, you know, we don't want to be in that spot because we can, if we can master the presentation, they're going to be like, oh, this sounds amazing. But if we're like, oh, it's going to be $1,400 and they only make three grand a month. They're like, that's crazy. Like, we don't want to do that. And so we want to make sure that we know where we're going to go before we get into all this. Because if it's, if it's a, if it's a CBO full payoff, I'm explaining this completely different. And you guys can go into the the VT to watch a CBO full payoff, but this is the most common scenario that I come across with uh, mortgage protection. So I feel like this is the best example to go over tonight. Um, but I know that these are the main areas that are important to them. Like equity on the home, it's so, like this policy isn't valuable because of the death benefit that they're going to get. It's valuable because this house is worth $100,000. And like, they're also going to have a place to live when we do get into the presentation, right? Like we're going to make it all about taking care of them. The other thing is their mortgage payments, right? So we don't want them to be in a position where, you know, and a lot of people, they're not, forward thinking enough to, to think about what it would be like that, you know, Betty is going to have to come out of pocket and, you know, John has all the household income. Like what would they do? Right? Like they didn't think about it, which is why they're on the phone with us. And so now that I have all of this laid out in front of them, a lot of times what I'm going to do here is again, I like to recap their situation a lot of times and I'll slow it down a little bit. So I'm not like, just kind of like driving home. Like I'm like, kind of like ramming them with like numbers and like getting in the presentation right away. Um, I like to say, all right, I just want to make sure I have everything correct. Your loan amount is 200,000. You pay a thousand bucks a month. You guys are really healthy for your age, which makes it easier to get better numbers and quotes for you guys and lower payments. Um, you guys currently have uh, the loan for 27 more years, right? Like I'll just totally recap it. And so I'll go over all that. And then, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to go over this stuff again. And I'm going to say, just want to make sure I understand it all correct. Making sure that you guys aren't in a bind and you're not leaving Susie with monthly payments that are going to be, you know, taking a lot of her income is the goal. Correct. We want to make sure Susie's financially taken care of. Okay. Gotcha. Right. And so they'll always say, yeah. And I'll say, all right. So, um, and at this point, like I've gone and I pulled some numbers and some quotes, right. And I'm going to make them up here as we go through this, but, um, this is kind of like, you know, there's a couple of different ways to do this. And I'm going to give you like, you know, a general way to do it. And if Jimmy's on here, Jimmy's got a, Jimmy's got a great way. I don't know if he's actually on here right now, but Jimmy has a great way to present. Um, so maybe he can hop in and do his too. But so what I typically do, and I'm going to kind of give you a mashup of what's been working. Um, 
because I'm kind of trying to tweak it always, right? Like we all are. Um, but I go into it and I'll say, all right, currently, right now, you guys have this situation. This is what it looks like. Understood. I want you guys to grab that pen and paper. We're going to go over two different options. And I want you guys to write both of these down. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, this is Dunlop's presentation, right, Nick? <laughs> is it? Hundo P. Yeah. Did you sell six? Is that what happened? I just got six. Let's fucking go. <laughs> You're an animal. I love it. <laughs> so this is this is the presentation. This is the magic six six policies in one day. Yeah. And, Nick, and I got one more. I, in an hour. One more. Come Get on. seven. I love it. <laughs> so when we go into this, we don't make it all about the month. We don't make it all about the death benefit. We're not like we're going to get a $25,000 payout. They're like, I don't want insurance. I want mortgage protection. So we're like, hey, write down equity protection. This is going to be equity. This is going to be an equity protector program. It's going to protect your equity. Okay. So they're like, all right, equity protection. Right. Great. We got equity protection down. And I'm like, all right. So we're going to go over two different options. I want you guys to take some notes on this and we'll go through this. And this is really simple. Like, again, it's not about the death benefit. It's all about this here. It's all about their equity. It's all about their monthly payments, okay? So as a salesperson, I'm gonna shine the spotlight on what I know is important. I'm not like, hey guys, here's your whole life insurance plan and you're gonna get $20,000 for your payout. It's gonna cover 20 months and th this is it. Like, this is what it's gonna be. No, I'm like, this is an equity protection plan. The goal of the plan is to give you the time that you need to make the next steps. And if you wanna put a renter in the home, if you wanna sell the house, you at least have some time while, you know, you're mourning and grieving about losing Bob and the lower of your, lowering of your income that you know that you can take the next steps and you're not going to be on the phone with banks and lenders trying to figure out what you're going to do. And you're going to have the cushion and the freedom to do what you need to do during that time. Does that sound fair? Got it, right? And so a line that I'm kind of stealing from Jimmy, but like, you know, as well as I do, that it's going to cost a lot of money at your age to cover the entire home. So these plans are designed or, excuse me, I'm going to take that back. The way it goes is, um, you know, Bob, if, if you were to pass away, Susie, do you know how much, you know, you would have to pay the, pay the bank. And so a lot of times they're thinking about the whole loan value. So like 200,000. And so what we say is, you know, that you don't have to pay the bank the 200,000. You're just going to have to make your next monthly mortgage payment of a thousand dollars. Did you know that you knew that? Okay. So this plan is going to cover you for your monthly mortgage payments for one year for 18 months. Or 22 months, right? And so we'll go option one, right? One year of payments. I'm not like, hey, it's 20, it's not, it's not twelve thousand dollar plan, it's one year payments. One year, right? That's what I want you to write down. You're gonna get one year mortgage payments with option number one. Option number one, and then number two, you're gonna get 18 months. And then option number three, 22 months. circle. And so they're not, we're not explaining it as a death benefit. That's going to pay out like a whole life plan. Cause it's not what they want to hear. They want mortgage protection, right? The concept, it's a whole concept. That's all it is. One year of payments, 18 months of payments or 22 months of payments. You pass in an accidental death. It'll cover two years. You pass in an accidental death. This one will be 36 and this one will be 44 months mortgage payments. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. And these plans are going to be super affordable the really low monthly rates. And the first one's going to be just $60 a month. I want you to write down 60. The second one I want you to write down here is going to be $75 a month. And then the third one here is going to be $90 a month for Susie, right? You guys got that written down? Okay, perfect. Now, each of these plans will give Susie and Bob enough time to be able to take those next steps. Now, is there any reason at all that the $60 a month is going to be unaffordable for you. That's the line. You don't say which one of these options. You say, is there any reason at all that you guys won't be able to afford the $60 a month? They always say, I can afford it. We can afford it. And so instead of, this is, you know, we'll hear from Nick here in a second. 
But instead of giving them the option to then chat about it or even just chat to you and decide and say, I'm not going to do it today. I need to think about it. I'm not going to do it. Like give you an objection. You just say, is there any reason that you can't afford the $60 a month? And they always say, no, I can afford the lowest one. You say, okay, well, we can start there and we can always come back and add on more. And since it isn't a matter of whether or not we're going to get this, we'll start you off with a $60 plan or you could do like, we could structure this, whatever, but you, you, you can even do 75, right? If you know they can afford 75 each for, for their plan, like you can say that, or you can do two options and scratch the low one and just do the two, which is usually what I do. But you present it and you say, is there any reason at all that you're, that you're, you wouldn't be able to afford X amount? And they always say, I can afford it. And you say, okay, I understood. We'll start you there. And these plans are flexible. You can come back and add on more if that's what you want to do. And then you're into the app. Hey, verify the spelling of your first and last name for me. Verify your date of birth. You don't wait because they're not like, like they'll, they'll talk themselves out of it. And Nick, can you just talk about all that? Oh my God, you're preaching to the choir. So even though I did six today, I've gone through major struggles, which is insane. Like I've been, I, I honestly have been trying to figure it out because I've been getting all the way through the script, right? And I get all the way to the end and they love me and they understand it and I have all the emotions there. And it's just like, I feel like I have these people and then I've been losing them at the end this entire time. You know, just for instance, Tyler and Jimmy, they, they both been saying that they've been closing anywhere between, you know, three to five out of every 25 that they buy. So sometimes more, right? Which is really good. I've been closing one out of 50. One out of 50, okay? And I've been losing my mind, hitting up Tyler, hitting up Jimmy, asking what the hell's going on. And I finally figured it out. That was it. It was literally the end of my pitch. I was letting him walk away. So at the end of it, I was saying, hey, so these are the, these are, are the three options. Which one's going to work for you? Like a fucking final expense lead, right? But, and I switched it and I was just like, Hey, so is there, is there, is there any reason? And I always say the lowest one, just like Tyler said, Hey, is there any reason that you wouldn't be able to afford the $71 and 56 cents a month? He's like, no. Okay, perfect. I'm going to pull up the app now and we're going to start with that. And, and just let you know, you can always add, add on more later and we can always lower it too. So go ahead and verify the spelling of your first and last name for me, dude. Like this guy that, this guy that I just sold, I swear to God, like the whole time he was just like, I don't know what this call's about. And then I told him, he's like, yeah, I, I don't think I, I don't think that I need that. And then his wife there's like, yeah, I don't think we need that. And I literally just went to the end and I just said it. I was just like, Hey, well, do you think, you know, do you guys think you can afford this? And he goes, yeah. And I just went fucking into it. And at the end of it, he was like, thank you so much for pushing me through this. And his wife said it too. She's like, thank, thank you so much for getting this done for this. I know my, I know my husband can be kind of an asshole. Dude, and all I did was just push them through and got it done, which I never would have done that before. That's the fucking secret sauce to how I went from one out of 50 to now I'm at, I don't even know what I'm at. I'm probably, I'm probably going to retire now. I think I'm done. <laughs> it's that, it's, it's, it's like the weirdest thing because like, I mean, Stash, can you talk about this? Like, you know, you, you say, hey, which of these three makes sense, right? And then you're like kind of waiting and you're like, please just pick one. And then they're like, ah, maybe that one, but right. Like they do it every time when you give them the freedom to every time. And that's a, and that's a car business thing. And not, and not only a, a car business thing, but it's sales 101. The, the first person to speak loses. Right. And it's drilled into my core, like just present and shut the fuck up and like, and like, let them choose. <laughs> and dude, that's, it's, it's been so drilled into me that I can't do that. Cause I've been just, presenting and shutting the fuck up and then they just talk themselves out of it so now i'm just switching my mindset to present and move forward like they're they're already on the phone can you afford this cool we're gonna start with that because guess what you can always add more and you can always add less and i got another guy today too is like well i think that we just really need to think about it because i we don't even know if we want to do this and i said hey great well what we're going to do is is we're going to do the 71 dollars a month because you can always go up you can always go down all the way to zero you can call me up and you can just say if you don't want it anymore you have a 30-day look window so go ahead and verify the spelling and dude he just went forward with it and said okay and it's crazy because they won't because they're locked. Like once you do it, they're just like, oh, I already got it taken care of. Like they just, yeah. they just don't worry about it anymore. You just got to get through that. And 
it's 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 literally like you said that that last line like you're not asking them if they want to do it you're not asking them like if it's okay if you do it like you're like this makes sense right okay great this is what we're going to do like you're not you're not letting them guide the conversation um and so it's massively different right and you're really like you're taking the control at the end when it matters most and you're not letting them think about it. Like those I feel like, like I could run through a fucking wall right now. Woo! <laughs> Damn. They'll literally talk themselves out of it. Trevor, what's up, bro? Is this only for a mortgage protection or does this work for final expense too? I'm sure it works for from for final expense too. But I just know uh, that in final expense if I say which of these three works, they just pick one. Like, I don't know what it is. Yeah. They just do it. You know what I mean? But with but mortgage, mortgage, they don't. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure right. it works great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I would see a higher. It, I'm curious to see if I would see a higher closing percentage by switching it, but. I'm, dude, I'm sure know. you could but, tell Frisbees and say that and it would work. But I feel like, I mean, but most of the time they're not picking the bottom one either. Usually it's the middle one that they're picking, but. Yeah, I guess I could ask. I don't know. I guess I could ask about the middle. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. But yeah, I'll definitely try it with mortgage, though. I like it. Yeah, I love it, dude. And so, Michael, I just saw you throw something down here. What, you know, are, are you on here? Are you able to pop in for a sec? Always, always here, man. Uh, dude, all right. You throw mortgage down like anybody else. Like, what do you, what is your equity protection? What is this, 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 clothes look like for you because you, you do it great as well dude i'm just i'm chasing jimmy i don't know what you're talking about um yeah yeah it's pretty sad i i love this like i actually i took a lot away from this because actually like the equity protection is like i i feel like i've just been like lucky so far um because like I, I feel like i actually struggle with the equity protection clothes like you know, the paying off the full mortgage and like, you know, paying off the half the mortgage, like they all love that, you know, like it's, it's like, you know, at that point you're like really taking orders, you know? Um, but like I, I struggled with the equity protection close. Um, so like this was gold for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've been, I pretty much kind of do what, um, you know, John Wetmore does. Um, and Jimmy shared that with me and I, I just, I love the way he presents it. You know, he's like, Hey, you know, my goal here, um, you know, is to take care of Betty and, you know, make sure that, you know, you know, when you pass bill, you know, that that financial burden um, is not going to fall on her. And she's not going to be at risk of losing this house, you know, and then, you know, pitch them, you know, hey, this is six, this is six 12 and 18 months, you know, and uh, since kind of doing it, doing it more like this, um, I've actually had a lot better results. So, but yeah, I love this. Yeah, dude. I got a yeah. question. Wait. So, yeah. the the people that do this, is there a really big uh, gap of age, or they're around the same age most of the time? I think it's different with lead sources. Um, I think that with with if you do mailers, you'll get more people in your 30s and 40s. Um, you know, there'll be 50s and 60s as well, and probably 70s too. For some reason, the the internet leads that we're using, and they're they're all great sources, but the internet leads are so high in 10, and they're like lay up presentations to get on the books. I think that we all love them so much. Um, so for all of us, we're using those, those strong point leads and they're, uh, they're, um, they're predominantly, I think my average is 50 years old. I think one day Jimmy and I did that. We, we looked at the average. I think Michael said he did that too, or Brad or someone else. My average is 50 years old. So like you'll get 50s, so you'll get 60s, you'll have a couple people in your 70s. I had a guy in his 40s today. I I had a, you know, like you you, you get it all. Um, but for the most part, they're going to be somewhere in that 40 to 65, 67, 70 range, you know. So the equity protection close for those leads is so important because that's what it's going to be a lot of time, which is why I think it was important to go over this for all of us, because it's, it's what most of the time our close is going to be. Um, I would say it's 50% this, and then sometimes you get some partial payoffs and then the other, you know, whatever percent it's, it's a, uh, it's a uh, full payoffs, Right. And like Michael said, when you're full payoff, half payoff, whatever the term policy is like, there's so many benefits to those that you can really just present it and they love it. Um, 
with these, you got to know how to present it with your words. Uh, Michael, what's up, bro? Yeah. Uh, are you writing policies for both uh, Bill and Sue? Is it, or is that depending upon their income? Like if they're equal income, obviously that would, you know, and, and if so, how are you, how you transition to showing both numbers or you show them one at, at one time or what do you yeah. do there? So what what I what I try to do is figure out who's going to be in the worst spot. Um, for this example, they're probably they're really in the same spot if one of them passes. Um, I think that they're, you know, it's it's good to have for this situation. I'll present both. Absolutely, but it's simple. Um, sometimes they're like, no, he earns way more. I need to like he has a pension or he has retirement that I'm not going to get if he passes away, or maybe he's working and not like. Sure he's still making money and it's like, well, if his income stops, like we're screwed, it's like different situation. Yeah. So in those times, um, that's the direction, you know, if it's one of them, one of them, right. In, in that example. Um, but a lot of times I'm trying to do both and it's, it's, yeah, I think, I think, it, you know, they're, they're really on the same page, especially when they're sitting right there and you can present it as, as if it's one policy, you can be like, you guys want to do the, you know, I could present both or I could like it's $75 or I could say it's, it's 140, it's $150 for you guys both to protect 12 months of mortgage payments for each other. Right. And then, Hey, it's, it's a uh, $214 to protect 18 months of mortgage payments for both of you guys together, which one or no, wait, <laughs> don't say that. Um, is there any reason why? Exactly. Is there any reason why the $150 a month would be too expensive for you guys. Right. And that's what like your average policy, like I think mine, I did the math the other day is like, I think it's like 1850 or something annual premium. And so like someone was saying to me the other day, the leads are more expensive. It's like, yo, the most unhealthy people that I write policies for are America Eagle premier. Like, and they're 1800 bucks a piece. There's no GIWL payouts. So there's a lot of benefits. Um, and None of them really charge back ever. So they're really sticky business. What's up, Nick? Hey, uh, okay, for um, that pitching numbers to close, um, is there any reason at all you wouldn't be able to afford the lowest option? Is that all for equity protection? Or are you doing that for like the full payoff, partial payoff, that stuff too? Yeah, I do it for all of it. Fire. Yeah, every single, every single mortgage protection flows. Um, and then guys, I don't know if Jimmy's on here, but I think he's selling because he's his audio is not connected. But I was gonna say Jimmy and I were texting back and forth the other night, and um I sent him a photo of like my my like America back end. And I was like, I was like, I'm coming for that uh that bonus, you know, that America does the 10% bonus. It, mine, like I think now it's at like 20,000 right? That's where like I'm at in the tracker to get to like, you have to qualify 45,000 guys, Jimmy sent me his and his says 50 K. I mean, like he already earned a $5,000 bonus and we're one month into the year. And like, I tell you guys that because like we can get such a huge and like, especially with mortgage, like the most unhealthy people, nine times out of 10 is going to be America Eagle premier series. Like you might have to write an edit because they're, you know, maybe they don't fit the height and weight chart, or maybe you do have to get it graded once every 50 policies. And I'm like, it's just crazy. Cause like you're writing such, you're writing business that pays out more and stickier. You're making more per sale. Your profits are higher and your bonus. I mean, guys, the bonus is like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Twice a year. If you do what Jimmy's doing right now, he's going to make 40 grand extra. I mean, the kid's in college full time. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. I thought I was doing great. And he's like, here's mine. I'm like, bro, what? So I just wanted to tell you guys that because it it can it can help your business so much to write America. And like, I mean, whenever Jimmy gets his deposit for it, I'm going to ask him to talk on one of these calls and just be like, dude, like, how, how helpful was this? Um, but it looks like he's on a call. But um, I just wanted to, I think that this was really, really good. Next week, maybe we'll do a different close and we'll put this one out. Um, and Dylan, I'm going to answer your question right here. Um, yeah, so this is a great question. I've heard this a lot. And I've been talking to people um, like a lot about all this. Like 
the biggest thing that um, I would recommend is if you're new or maybe you're trying to get into, you know, you're hearing about mortgage and you're, you're, you've been writing final expense. Like if you're brand new, I say write 20 to 25 policies, final expense, and then start training mortgage and start sprinkling it in. If you've already written 20, 25 policies, you know how to sell and you know the products to sell with final expense. Like, you know what it is. And those are used a lot of the times in mortgage. So you already know half of how to sell mortgage. You just got to do some, learn some new words, learn the new script, Get comfortable saying it and study the five different closes, which are in VT. So you can go back and look in those just to know which one it is, right? And then you get on live dials. We're going to start doing role play calls for mortgage every week and we'll do breakout rooms. So we're all like legit practicing, like given scenarios and stuff. And you just plug into all that and you're going to grow, right? And that's our goal is to get everyone. If you're running final expense now, it's great. You can make great money in it. You can, you know, build a great book of business, but mortgage protection is kind of a different game and it's bigger, uh, more payouts, higher payouts, helps you with the bonuses. Um, it's it's really, really helpful for business. Um, it's stickier. You don't have to deal with chargebacks as much. Um, and guys, like another thing I want to mention is, you know, if you know people, right? Like a lot of people in our all of our age groups, whether you're like Jimmy in your 20s, you probably knows a couple of people that have bought a house already. I'm in mid twenties, you know, I know people in their thirties, right? Like there's people that are different ages on these calls. Like if you want to get a little bit of experience, the PowerPoint presentations in the Lightspeed portal, um, talk about mortgage protection and how people use these policies for mortgage protection. Here's a hack. Go to five people or 25 people or whatever and say, and this is in the training center too, in the leads section, if you guys want more sales, right? And you're like, you know, maybe you don't have the money for leads or to buy leads or to practice mortgage protection. Go into the training center, watch these videos on how to generate warm market business and how to generate business with no lead spend. You guys can go in and you guys can, I could text 25 people that I know right now and say, Hey, I just got this new opportunity. I'm starting in this new job. A part of my training is to present this PowerPoint to 25 people or 10 people do you have 15 minutes today or tomorrow that I could present this to you? And you literally walk through the presentation and I promise you 20% of the people that you show it to will ask you how much it costs and they'll be interested. And then you can close it and you just go through the presentation and it just talks about mortgage protection, how most people don't have it, why it's beneficial, what most people think it is versus what it really is, how it helps people, some examples, some testimony stories, and you can write a business from that. Um, but Isabel, what's up? Hey, two questions for you. The first one is um, the the internet and the leads. Where are you getting them from? Did it take you a while to actually start seeing the turnaround? Because I know you've been doing the mortgage protection for what a couple of months already. Yeah, so I think that if, if, if you're going to start doing it, I wouldn't recommend starting to just like buy leads today um, just because like you're all hopped up and like Nick sold a bunch of policies. Like I think that you should definitely train the script, practice the process, get a good foundation of it. And then take a step in and keep writing your final expense and buy 25 mortgage leads. Don't go crazy and just spend all your money on mortgage leads if you're in a tight, tighter spot. But like, you know, kind of be smart about it. I was saying to someone today, like Ethan and Oz were sitting here and we we're talking about it. It's like, you know, do 90, 10 and then like 80, 20 and 70, 30 and then 60, 40 and then like 50, 50. And like if you're closing, it's a jump, right? And so I think that that's really smart to just start to study for a week, implement the, like practice the process, get on some of these role play calls that we'll do, and then start to, um, you know, buy some leads. Once you feel a little bit more comfortable, start to become second nature, just like the final expense process. Awesome. And I also wanted to mention that I saw those videos today. They're amazing. Everybody should really, whoever hasn't, I didn't know they were there. I'm sure you've mentioned that a thousand times because I, I didn't hear it, but they're amazing. Yeah, they're actually brand new. And I've sold multiple policies doing, I think, every single one of those. And there's four different ways you can generate business with no lead spend, and they work, I promise you. So if you oh, haven't gone into VT and seen those, watch those. Thanks. I saw I saw that, you know, Cody Askin has like a series of the, the two series of uh, Final Agent or something like that. And they were doing door-to-door -door and calls too, like. I'm like thinking, dude, I'm going to do that too. Going yeah, to I love it. Yeah, dude. There's leads everywhere. Leads are just people. You know what I mean? Like, um, 
yeah, they're just people and they're just people who have a need. So I love it. Um, that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. That's the link to register for the February 8th event. If you guys have not registered, get out here. It's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to get together. We're going to do, you know, a little day at the den. If you guys are here the night before, the day before, we'll probably do something, get together and, and spend some time together because it's just good to be around everybody and be a part of what we're doing here. So make sure you guys are here. If you're not um, planning on coming yet, um, try to do everything you can to get out here. And, you know, we're here to help uh, you guys. If you need anything, the discord is always live. There's people in there all day long answering questions, helping people sell policies, live dial rooms. And uh, man, I want to be like Nick Dunlap when I grow up. I'll see you guys in the live dollar room tomorrow, Nick. I'm like Tyler when I grow up. Dude, live dollars tomorrow, Nick. <laughs> and Gabby. Gabby's slinging as well. Jimmy, Michael. What else we got? Dylan, Angel, Mike. Man, bro. Throwing it down, baby. Let's do it. Oh, it's just cool. the beginning. I love it.